All right, so getting to another controversy, the the secret gospel of Mark. You talked about it on Sean McDowell's show, and I, I found your takedown to be really convincing. And then I went online and read a little bit about it. I read an article on uh, in Bar Magazine, and oh, yeah, yeah. I think the author was actually trying to vindicate it, although... I'm sure he was. Uh, Herschel he Shanks. I knew Herschel Shanks, the late... Owner and director, you know, of Biblical Archaeology Society, the editor of Bar, founding mm-hmm. editor. He passed away during the pandemic, unfortunately, a couple of years ago at the age of 90. Good man. I liked him. I always thought he was fair and a straight shooter. Um, but I, I don't know. He got so burned over the James Ossuary, the malicious lies, that, and some of them going back to scholars about, oh, the James Ossuary is a fake. The, name of Jesus was tacked on at the end, Right. blah, blah, blah. None of that was true. And in the end, he was vindicated. Oded Golan, who owns the Ashray, was vindicated. Uh, by the way, James Tabor you know, was right on that also. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and anyway, I think he was really burned on that. And so out comes C- Secret Mark, and people are saying that Morton Smith forged it. And I think, I think Herschel said, wait a minute. Morton Smith's dead. He's not here to defend himself. This isn't fair. And wanted to defend Morton Smith. And I think what makes this difficult, Ryan, is nobody's out to attack Morton Smith. It ultimately said it's all about this artifact. Now, Morton says he found it at a certain place at Marsaba, the monastery there. I've been there. It's in the middle of the Judean desert on the south side of what really is the Kidron Valley, the wadi that goes all the way to the Dead Sea. So about halfway equidistant between Jerusalem and the Dead Sea on the south bank of this wadi is the Marsaba Monastery. And uh, Morton Smith was there in 41, and he says he returned in 58 and rummaged around through whatever old books that were there that weren't cataloged, and he looked at a whole bunch of them. And one of them that he finds, an old book, cover is missing, and it's a 17th century edition of the Letters of Ignatius. And uh, the book itself is in Latin. The letters, of course, are Greek. And he finds in the blank end pages uh, two full pages and two-thirds of a page written in Greek from, he says, from the 18th century, when the book's about 100 years old. Somebody has written this, a long-lost letter of Clement in which he discusses a larger, a longer version of Mark, mystical Mark, and he actually quotes two passages. And the one that's potentially offensive is the one that says that the young man that Jesus had raised from the dead came to Jesus one night wearing nothing but a linen sheet over his naked body, which is an odd thing to say. (laughs) It's like saying right now we're wearing clothes over our naked bodies. Who would say that? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it's a very odd thing. And so I think it's being said deliberately to bring male nudity into the into the mind of the reader. And uh, anyway, and so then Jesus that night discloses to him the true meaning of the kingdom of God and alludes to a passage about the mystery of the kingdom, quoting Mark 4.11 verbatim. And so, Ryan, the reason a whole bunch of us find this strange in the letter, Clement, tells Theodore, the person to whom he's writing, to lie, to give a false oath with regard to the reality of the longer version of Mark. Would Clement do that? Certainly not. Does he do that anywhere in his extant writings that are unquestionably authentic? Of course not. Mm -hmm. This whole thing smacks of being bogus right away. This is weird. The other thing that bothers us, there's reference to seven veils uh in in the text the only other place where we have veils referred to this way is in a a homoerotic play that oscar wilde wrote the 1880s and and you wonder well why am i bringing this up well morton smith was a homosexual and felt disadvantaged for this reason by conservative churchmen in his own career in the 40s 50s and so this is then is thought to maybe go to the motive. But for me, Ryan, the killer, and this is widely accepted among critics, and this is why very few gospel scholars take secret marks seriously. 
what what really turns me off on this letter is there are three unmistakable places in Morton Smith's pre-1958 publications where he knows the contents of this text. And so, and I can mention, like one of them, he says, Mark may have contained Johannine elements. Well, that is a weird, weird idea. Well, Secret Mark has a John 11 raising Lazarus from the dead kind of passage. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other one that's really weird is Morton Smith, prior to 1958, wondered if Mark 4.11, the, the secrets of the King of God, had to do with a secret uh, rituals that had something to do with sex. That's weird. He actually talks about that in his dissertation, written in Hebrew in the 1940s, published in English in 1950. And... Um, Nobody has ever thought Mark 4.11 had to do with some strange mystical rituals that might perhaps have something to do with sex. Mm. Well, Martin does. And guess what? <laughs> this passage is quoted in the Marsaba Clementine letter in the passage that's supposedly from Longmark in a context in which Jesus does something with a, with a young man who's naked other than his little sheet the whole thing stinks. Wow. And this is why most scholars say, you know what? I don't know. Did Morton find it in 1940 and then fib and say he found it in 58 after he got a bunch of ideas from it? That's a possibility. Mm. Or did he just make the thing up? He was studying how to write in that particular mo monastic hand. And that can cut both ways. You can say, well, of course he did. He's trying to decipher it. He had to learn how to identify the letters or was he learning how to imitate them i don't know you know we have handwriting experts and this is where i i did disagree with the late herschel shanks what was interesting was there were uh stephen carlson consulted with an fbi handwriting expert and she concluded and and stephen knows a little bit about this himself he has experience in this they both concluded that Morton Smith held the pen. He's the one that wrote it. Well, of course, Herschel Shanks uh, said, well, let's, why don't we get a couple of native Greeks to do this? So he, he hired two Greeks, one an older guy with a lot of experience, one a younger woman with less experience. The woman said, no, Smith didn't write it. The older one said, no, he did write it. And so Smith, or I should say Shanks, concludes there. See, Smith didn't write it. And I thought, wait a minute, Herschel, are you thinking? We have four experts that have looked at this text. Three of the four say Morton Smith wrote it. And the one that said he didn't has the least amount of experience. Now, for me, that's still not conclusive, but my goodness. Wow. I end up agreeing, you know, with you know, a former colleague, good friend in Canada, Pierre Luigi. Uh, Pio Vanelli in Ottawa, who said, look, and he's he's looked at, Nor uh, at Morton Smith's correspondence that survived. Morton wanted all of his correspondence destroyed. That was his wish. But of course, letters are elsewhere, you know, and so a lot of letters survive. And there's no email. They're actually handwritten letters. And he's read his letters and he says, you know, I think there are hints of this fraud going on uh, prior to the discovery in 1958 and beyond. And he says, I can't prove it, but he said, I just think you you should stay away from it. If you're going to talk about the historical Jesus, if you're going to talk about the Gospel of Mark, or if you're going to talk about uh, Clement, don't use secret Mark. I agree with that. By the way, some of his strongest supporters who say, oh, no, no, he's telling the truth. He really found it. It's authentic. Uh, in fact, it's a fragment of what Mark originally was in the first century. You know, I used to say, well, maybe there was an expanded version of Mark in the second century. I don't say that now. But, uh, you know, they'll say that. But here's the problem on that. If there really was a second version of Mark that's longer, that contains this passage. How do we not hear about that right. in the patristic history? 
how do we not have one shred of textual evidence in the Mark and manuscripts? That is a bombshell. Mm -hmm. And there's not a hint of it until Morton Smith comes up with it in 1958 at Marsaba or wherever he got it. See what I mean? I mean, really? There's a text floating around at least as far back as the second century, maybe even the first, in which Jesus receives a young man in the nude. And Smith talks about union. He's, he's making it really clear how he thinks about it. A sexual, physical union between the teacher and the disciple, and they, that leads to ecstasy, an ecstatic soul ascent of some kind, a celestial orgasm, as it were. Ah, oh, come on. There's a text open to that possibility. And of course, in the Marsaba letter, Clement, you know, is outraged that anybody would think that. So he makes it clear in case you, you missed it, that there were people who did interpret this that way, supposedly. Right. Well, how can right. this be going on and nowhere else in Clement's work, no other church father, no manuscript at all says, oh, my gosh, there's a variant here. You know, there's this passage. Oh, wow. There's not a ripple anywhere till 1958. Interesting. 